All right, just finished playing The Forgotten City. Took me about six or seven hours, I believe. This was about four hours of streaming today, and then I believe we put in about three hours or so. It's made by a really small team, about three people over four years. Originally was a mod from Skyrim. Horky asked a great question. Could you use this as a gateway game for people who have never tried a video game? It does rely on the the twin stick movement, but it's not, and there are a little bit of reflexes involved when you have to do the combat. I think that the combat might be pretty tough, but I believe that that part of it, like the main combat section is actually optional because the game does tell you, you can skip it. It says, if you don't like this part, if you don't like parts that require action or horror elements, so you could probably bypass that. The saves are really well done. Even when we had like a crazy crash, it, it actually had luckily saved it. And it wasn't even a crash with some silly thing where my Xbox wasn't the, uh, wasn't the set as the main console. And then when the Xbox was offline, it thought that it kicked me out of the game, which is really horrible. Anyways, yeah, the saves are very generous. There's not really a lot of combat other than that one spot. And everything's pretty slow paced, so you could probably like get used to just sort of moving around and um, getting used to the twin sticks. And it's mostly just dialogue. It's all voice acted. There, there are some parts of, they're sort of like serious lore, but it connects well together. And to me, I felt really connected to it. There's a bit of combat when you go to get the stuff for the fourth ending. I actually ran past everybody. So I didn't have to deal with any of that. Uh, which I really liked. And then some of the combat stuff was was more like puzzle solving where you're you're up in one spot and you're looking for I'm trying to do this without spoiling. Um not necessarily reflex based, but there are there are some combat encounters where it is gonna be reflex based. Anyway, I think you could recommend this to somebody to who's never really played a game. It's not that long. And they could kind of bang their head against it quite a bit. It does a great job of asking you to think for yourself and read the dialogue or listen to the dialogue. Make decisions based on what you've actually heard and understood. Imagine that. But then also doing a pretty good job of leading you to the right place when you have enough information or making it somewhat obvious as to where you need to go. I'd say there's a few things that were a little bit unpolished, like in the in when you need to speak to somebody to get to, to progress it and get that next bit of information from them or talk to them about something you haven't talked to, it will it will often gray out, say, the first tree of the dialogue, even though you need to click on that grayed out one to get to a non-grayed out portion later on. So that could actually be kind of confusing. So for people who have played a lot of games, they might not be expecting that. And that did, that did slip me up a few times. But I think overall, the characters are pretty charming and memorable. They're pretty fun to interact with and uh, speak to. It was a pretty fun city to explore. There was It was dense and there was a lot to get to, but they made it easy with shortcuts and, you know, roundabouts. Um, like semi-fast travel. And for it being like a time loop game, they put in a few little tweaks that made it a very non-punishing time loop game. I was actually really, really pleased with that fourth ending where normally when it comes to like a bunch of lore, I could not give a fucking shit about it. But this one, it actually tied together and made sense and your role in it made sense. Another thing they do in games that can be annoying is characters tend to tell you like, oh, you're the hero. Oh, thank God for you. But this one actually made sense and it felt very earned. It was just a very enjoyable, well-told story where it mattered that your character was present and uh, a very satisfying conclusion. It doles things out to you pretty quickly. It's very intuitive when you start off with uh, who you run into. They sort of like, they designed the level so well. There are probably a few areas where I was a little confused where I was going, but it's so small and you can put on quest indicators pretty easily 
that if you have any semblance of how to play a game or how to play one of these games, you'll immediately know what to do and and how and and if you don't know what to do, how to get the tools, how to get the quest indicators. It definitely avoided the trappings of a cinematic game. I never felt like I was a passerby. I never felt like uh, a lot of times when I'm playing like a cinematic game or really story based game or even just any kind of game, some I'll think like, why am I even playing? And I think this game justified that you actually had that it wasn't just a movie and that it was a controller. Because when we were going to go for the fourth ending, I felt the need to just skip doing the work and just watch the ending. But I'm really glad that I achieved the final ending on my own because it wasn't that long. It was pretty satisfying to put the final pieces together. Although I will say that it did feel like you pretty much knew how to get the final ending before you you know right before you were about to do it anyway which meant there was no frustration potential frustration but it did mean that that wasn't the driving force but then once it got going and i got to see the last two big set pieces that was great i really liked the final confrontation of it sticking with the entire theme of the game of uh of what is right and what is wrong and having a final confrontation that relies on questions and answers and a debate that was set up from the from the pretty much from every character you speak to and from uh the first kind of main antagonist and then the uh the hermit fellow and then the final boss well i remember i once i saw, once i got ending two i realized ending three was probably going to be pretty similar and then ending four, though, I, I thought I remember from some of the dialogue, they had told you what you needed to do. So I, I knew it was going to be something like that. I didn't realize they were going to pull it off so well. Okay, all right, let's do a spoiler section. So my recommendation for this game is definitely play it. I played it on Game Pass, which is obviously worth the value. Um, if this game was, say, $20 or $25 Canadian, I'd say it's worth it. It's a good, good couple sessions, a good couple after, a good couple evenings or afternoons for you. So I'd fully recommend it to people that enjoy dialogue and games, a little bit of puzzle solving, a little bit of, it's just like a nice light RPG with some pretty creative story and puzzle, no, not really puzzle elements, but like mystery, it's like mystery, exploration, dialogue, character development. It's got all of that. And then it's got a, a really nice, a super fun, satisfying finish, too. So, all right, well, let's go to a spoiler section. Horky, you tell me the things that I didn't even see. All right, so when you confront Hades at the end, oh, you're such a Hades fanboy. You mean Osiris or Pluto or Nurgle? If you don't solve it through dialogue, you have to shoot Persephone. You take her crown and then you and then you're his queen. <laughs> and then you have to escape with it and loop again and then you bring it back to him. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then what does he do? So you show him the you show him the crown. And then he he would just give up on everything that he's sacrificed his whole life for. So it, so in the end of this, the the proper way that we had done it, or what felt like the best way, we show him it's love after all. I mean, love is what made him go to these extreme lengths to sacrifice the last what three thousand years of his life or more to just watch generations of civilizations come through and fail every time, just so he can try to get her into heaven or to their next place wherever they're going back home to where all his stuff is even though she didn't want to go there to begin with so is that really love overall the two escape endings yeah well that was great i really recommend that game to just about anybody that's into exploration puzzle dialogue it's a really light game it's a, it's a really refreshing game too to play 
And uh, I, I would recommend don't play it all in one sitting and get a bit burned out on it. It's nice to have a bit of space between it. I'd maybe like spread it over three three sessions. Recommended. <laughs> 